Today, I'm speaking with David Regan, the CEO of Sona Nanotech, which is a very interesting company in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, David, you, your uh, company is basically, has, is becoming a world leader in gold nano rods. So let me say something about that for our audience. The nanotechnology is something we've been talking about for years, but at the end of the day, there's, there's been very little commercialization because creating and handling nanomaterials is so damn difficult. So I have a question for you. Uh, you, you could probably uh, create enough inventory of gold nano rods if you wanted to for the rest of time in, in your bathtub, okay? Because <laughs> it, it's, you don't need very many nano rods to, to do something and there are a lot of nano rods in a, in a gram of gold. Now, my question is, and I, this has happened before when I've discussed nanotechnology. How, if someone wants a sample of your gold nanorod to use in R&D in Tanzania, how do you get it to them? Well, look, that's not a, not a problem. And we've actually shipped our nanorods <clears throat> around the world. Okay. Uh, to different researchers looking to, uh, to, looking to work with them. Uh, you know, it's not considered a, a hazardous material at all. No. It, it's not sensitive. What I mean, David, is how do you keep the nano rods from becoming just a little clump of gold? How do you keep nano rods in as nano rods when you ship them around? That, that's the thing I, I never could figure out anybody could do. They are suspended in a matrix that keeps them uh, stable. Uh, you know, our technology, we believe, is particularly uh, provides for stability in those nano rods, which enables them to be shipped. Uh, but typically they'll come in a small bottle. Oh. <laughs> okay, we have a bottle. Uh, sort of a ah. small uh, fluid like container like that. And yes, ah. you're right. Uh, one of those canisters would be enough to, um, to uh, suffice you for your, for your lifetime's use of uh, all your needs, Jack. And the, uh, the only other technical question I have is this. You, you've been saying that you can, you can produce gold nanorods in a non-toxic medium. And that's very important because one, one of the reasons they're not, uh, haven't been used in medicine very much is because of the toxic nature of the reactants necessary to make them. Now, can you just give me a, a brief synopsis of how you've overcome that problem? Sure. So this is the manufacturing process for gold mm -hmm. nanorods. As we've discussed, you know, ours are not the only gold nanorods in the world, but ours are the only ones that are biocompatible, that don't use toxins uh, as a surfactant when, the, when the, uh, the tiny piece of metal is in fact elongated and turned into a rod. Uh, using a surfactant that's necessary, the surfactants that are used are, are toxic. Our process enables us to create the gold nanorod without the toxic materials. That's proprietary to us. That's what patents are pending on. And in, in many cases, uh, and in many applications for gold nanorods, uh, folks would say, well, okay, biocompatibility isn't a consideration for our particular uh, industrial use for it. However, when one starts looking at uh, at uh, medical applications, in vivo medical applications of implanting these, these gold nanorods in the body, biocompatibility will become paramount. And would you just once again pick up one of those vials with the gold nanorods in it? Sure. And show it. Uh, okay. I see purple color there, and I just want to point out to our viewers that the ancient Romans made glass that was purple and it was because of gold nano rods. They didn't know that, uh, but that, that this has been around for quite some time. And I congratulate you on after 2000 years, finding a good use for that stuff besides colored glass. You've done Thank your you. work. You've done your work, Jack, on that and your research. And that's something that, uh, that uh, one of our co-founders who invented this technology uh, coming out of one of the university laboratories here, uh, was very proud to uh, to suggest the fact that look, this has been around for for thousands of years, but uh, we're now able to use it, create it, manipulate it. 
Okay, th thank you, David, for explaining those things to us, and I, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Jack. Always happy to speak and uh, happy to answer any other questions.